Hey everybody, welcome back to Betty and Leon. On today's episode, we're going to be recapping Rotary Revival. I'm going to give you an update on the 808's interior. We've had some progress there. We're going to talk about potentially a new project car to take to events like Rotary Revival. And also give you the lowdown on what we're doing on this guy, preparing for the next race meet in a week's time. First cab off the rank, Rotary Revival. What an awesome day it was. And, you know, I've been going basically every single year since it started in Brisbane. And I've got to say, the quality of cars that are coming through now and the amount of people and the amount of younger people is just awesome. You know, there was so many people there this weekend and there was so many cars. You know, I think that, I think the end figure, I think was around a hundred and 60 to 180 cars, which the previous year was about 120. So a decent increase on getting those Mazdas back on the road, having fun with your mates. And I've got to say, we had a mad time in, in Young Leon. We were, we were doing some tying testing, so we weren't on the track a lot. We were just sort of doing racer laps, as they call it, and testing those tires. Had a bit of an issue with third gear. It, Coming in the first turn, you know, didn't really want to select very well, which is a bit of a pain because you're hauling through there at a rapid rate of knots, but I actually think it's related to a clutch issue. So today I'm going to be having a bit of a play with that guy. Uh, favorite car, I think, would have to have been this guy that I'm going to throw on the screen right now. Mazda 1300. It was the guy's first meet. I actually spoke to him. It was his, literally, they'd finished it at like three o'clock in the morning uh, on the dyno. The tuner was even out there with him on that day to basically road tune it while they're cruising around. Obviously it was on running tune, so they couldn't really give it too much, but yeah, I gotta say, absolutely unreal. Um, cool car, man, just absolute cool car, beautiful paint on it, you know, and that was just one of many. There were so many nice cars there. A couple of honorable or dishonorable mentions there were two cars there that were the loudest damn things I think I've ever heard in my life. I think it was a Series 6 RX-7 and uh, like a Series 1 to 3 uh, RX-7. Definitely had those pipes chopped off nearly basically at the header. Um, <laughs> those things were screaming. I don't think my ears have ever been as damaged as as anything um, going to a, to a racetrack before and listening to that. It was, it was chaos. But you know what? It takes all types and... It was, it was good to see him out there. Pretty, pretty damn cool. So after going to a revival and having an awesome day, I think it would be better if we retired the race cars from events like a re revival and we not started a new project, but start a new project with probably old Rusty because it does look kind of cool and it means I'm not doing body work. It means we'd throw like a nine inch or Hilux in the back, maybe still run a four speed, probably go five speed with it. Cause you know, five speeds are probably more fun. Um, use maybe one of the old 12 A's, not fuel inject it or fuel inject turbo. Don't know. What do you guys reckon? Throw it in the comments. Do we build a rig purpose built for just going out and having some fun? Honestly, I think running these cars is pretty dumb. Costs a lot of money every time we fire one of them up. Um, it always costs in oils, you know, engine, gearbox diff. Um, and every time that engine runs, man, like it's built to be a race car. It's not built to idle around and, you know, play games like that. So let me know in the comments what you think. Should we get old Rusty, leave the body, leave everything, maybe even just pull the windows out of it and leave front and rear windshields. I don't know. You let me know in the comments what you reckon, that if that's a good idea going forward for us, because I actually think it is. And I want to see some of your ideas put down in the little bleep bloop it in the comment section. Let's have a little chat about the 808. It has been having progress. We went down to Phil's Rotaries. He's been closing up shop and picked up a few goodies for that car. Um, mostly the 
if you remember back in the one of the stripping videos, the right hand, uh, well, the driver's side sort of, um, what would it be like chassis support or something, you know, the one that's up the top that always gets rusted out in the bottom. We went and picked up another one of those. It's, it's going to fit perfectly. So that's awesome. So that's one piece that we won't have to mess around making. We'll just drill those spot welds out, weld it back on and Bob's your uncle job finished pretty quickly. And for the money, I think it was about 150 bucks, 160 bucks or something for the part, you know, can't get, can't go past it at that sort of money. Next up, I've been doing a bit of interior work, which when I say interior, it's not recoverings or things like that. It's just painting plastics, painting dials, basically refreshing everything. Um, yeah, it's time consuming and very, very slow, especially if you want it to look any good. So I've got a little hot tip for you here. I filmed it about a week ago or something. Um, maybe it'll help you out on your resto. Maybe it won't. I've always found it does. It, it brings up the chrome pretty well. I've used it on Betty. I've now used it on the 808, so I think it works. But please listen to my disclaimer. It is legit. If you overdo it doing this little trick, you will pit all your chrome and it will trash the piece of plastic. Okay, so just listen to what I say at the end of my little hot tip. You're probably gonna think I'm crazy, but here's a hot tip for getting all this, um, like the green tarnish off the chrome vents. Get yourself some Coca-Cola. Have a sip if you feel that way inclined and pour it in. And if you've ever seen what it does to a coin, well, it's basically the same thing. We're just going to make our... Oh, it's actually not going to float. That's great. It's going to make our little vent chrome look awesome. We'll leave that for a couple of days. I generally um, top it up and yeah, just keep it kind of fresh. Probably go through, I don't know, three or four cans I usually do, but we'll leave it there. Let it um, do it work its magic and we'll come back. And boom, we are back. Okay, so it's been a day. I've probably changed the Coke three times, I suppose, in that day. Each time I'm checking it to make sure that it's not pitting the chrome, because if you leave it in for too long, it will destroy it. That's my disclaimer. Do it at your own risk, but I've had good results. But yeah, don't expect to leave it in there for a week and think it's gonna re-chrome itself. It ain't gonna happen. So anyway, let's have a look, see what it's done for us. Boom, not bad. It's actually brought it back pretty well. Like I said, it's not going to re-chrome it. Let's go over here and give it a bit of a bit of a hose. Um, yeah, it won't re-chrome it, but I mean, you know, if it's the difference between it looking a little bit shiny or looking all tarnished, you know, for a couple of cans of Coke or or uh, a 1.25 is pretty much what I used because you know I needed to submerge that little beauty. Um, I will just dry this off and then we'll have the reveal of the final product. But yeah, you can see it there. Like, look how much better that looks. I'll do a side by side um, than it was, you know. But you can still see there's pitting on it, like on the back side. But we don't see that. All we see is this bit. And I reckon it looks a million times better. So I'll dry it up and we'll have a look at it dry. Finished product. Check that out. I can actually see myself in the reflection. Pretty cool, but um, yeah, came up a million dollars. We'll now go and fit this into the latest thing that I've been working on. It's not very exciting, it's interiors in cars, but you know, it's progress. And the 808, even though it's not with me, it needs progress. I've just put that vent back in the instrument cluster. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of a, little bit of, little inside run on what's happening with the interior. This part's finished, as well as the center console bit, which I'll show you in a second. Um, pretty happy with how it turned out. Let's uh, let's turn him round. 
unveil that bad unit. So, sorry about the camera angle. Looking pretty fresh. Those with a good eye would probably um, pick up on a couple of things. May give away the color of the interior, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see with the eagle eyes. Let me know in the comments. So that piece is finished. It can walk with me now. Let's head over to the all important staging area for the components and um, we'll have a look inside here. Oh, look at that. That piece is also finished. So pretty happy with it. Um, progress, progress on the 808. That's what's been happening is all the interior bits and pieces and I don't know, man, slow going with this sort of stuff because you're, you're painting things and you're pulling really intricate pieces apart. And that's just how it rolls sometimes. I'm going to preface this by saying I love when you guys ask questions. I actually really enjoy answering them. So today's question came from Keith. And thanks for asking. Yes, this little buzzer here is what I would call, and if you know your aircraft, you know, it's like the eCam e or the iCAS or the management warning computer. Um, basically, the way Alan sort of rigged this whole car was very risk adverse. And anything and everything will make that little buzzer. And I'll just um, give you, let you know what it sounds like. So it's damn loud. And if you see the lights, so if you see the lights there also that are lit up, when any one of those lights is lit, basically means you've got some sort of issue. And what I mean by issue is you may have zero oil pressure, you may have no fuel flow, because obviously the, the pump's not running. Um, if your radiator coolant is low, um, also if you're not charging, like alternate, alternate a light too so yeah pretty cool cool little system but i mean in the rewire the great rewire of 2023 hopefully that's that's coming up i'm gonna ditch all that stuff um i prefer to just use the gauges and and listen for things um i'd like to think i'm pretty coming from the aircraft world i'm i'm pretty receptive to looking at you know master cautions and master alarms and and all those kind of cool things that you get inside aircraft where you're multitasking a hundred things at once so yeah it's going to be cool when i rewire it but i don't see a need for that going forward maybe i'm wrong maybe you can let me know in those comments too um yeah so that's it so i hope i answered your question really well there keith like i said thanks for for, for asking it's always nice when people are taking a real good interest in what you're doing and yeah, thanks for doing that. Last but not least on today's episode, I'm uh, in the process of doing some brake changes. So check out this. This is the old brake disc. I actually had to cut off one of the studs because it was jammed in there and it wasn't going to be coming out. Here we go, we've got the new rotor. Obviously, it's got good threads and I went and bought some new hardware too, just to keep it all nice and fresh. Um, this time around, we're also gonna be changing back from these guys. So these guys are Winmax pads. Um, you see they take, they cop a bit of a hiding, don't they? We are going back to a club racer project mu beautiful pad and i can't wait to run this car with them i've been wanting to change the pad compound for about a year but when we bought the car we got like three sets of of winmax with the car so it was silly to just go and spend that money um, for no reason but now that we're down to the last set and we don't use them all the way down, it's just I prefer a nicer pedal with fresher pads. Makes a difference to your braking and um, 
yeah, we're going back to the club races. I can't wait to feel them on this car. I'm hoping that it's going to transform things and make us a bit quicker because this car does not break anywhere near as good as Betty does. So that's the plan right here. Got those bearings. Got all the other bits and pieces of the, the puzzle there. We'll get it all back together and that'll do us. Thanks for watching on today's episode. Really appreciate it. This one was really just a catch up, show you what's going on. Next week, we are going to Morgan Park for the autumn historic meeting. We've entered, there's only one RX2, that's us. So we're gonna be that underdog again. Um, we're racing against Mustangs, Camaros, Tiranas, Capris, you know, all that big stuff. But we'll give it a good shake. See if we can come home with a W. That's the plan. That concludes today's video. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and we'll catch you on the next one at the racetrack, burning that rubber. Cheers.